Wow, what happened last night? We're going to talk about the absolutely insane Thursday night football game, the fantasy implications. We'll jump back into the fantasy forecast, break down the Week 11 matchups, and we've got ballers on a budget as well. Stay tuned. Hey, Foot Clan, want to remind you about our side hustle, our comedy podcast, The Spit Ballers. It comes out every single Monday. We're making Mondays fun. Hey, look, you're driving to work. You, you got no you're fun. waiting on the ballers. Yeah, you're waiting for that. Check out the other ballers. Have, have a good, have a good spit laugh. Ballers and this particular episode, look, I don't want to toot toot, but I have to. We've been told it's the funniest thing that has ever existed in the <laughs> podcast space. So check it out. The Spit Ballers podcast, wherever you listen. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. What a night we had. Friday, November 15th, the Fantasy Footballers We've got a jam-packed show. Was that a proclamation of like the future of what a night where we had, but the night hasn't happened? Nope. It was more a reflection on last night. Mm. And look, we we're in week eleven, and I want to I want to set the table here. We're in Arizona. We don't move our clocks, right? Correct. We, we're one of the us in what Hawaii. We don't have daylight I, savings time. I hear Illinois is on the way. Are they really? Oh, that's good that's for what I hear. You. Well, that, I'm not going to get into that. That's for spitballers. <laughs> but uh, the daylight savings thing that happened during the war, and right. we just keep doing it. Uh, but we don't move our clocks. And so when everyone else does, out here, the games are on an hour later. And so, look, our families are so supportive of this show. We do the show every single day. We do extra shows. We do the serious show. We're busy during the season. And sometimes it's it's hard like my wife understands i gotta watch these these evening games at home but i feel for her and it's so, work honey and i do yeah and that's how i say it right very solemnly because i you know it's daddy really, has to work i'm in the coal mines every <laughs> monday night thursday night but i you know it, it was getting late last night it's 21 to 7 and there's two minutes left in the game and i'm like yeah let's let, i'm a cut and run here we're right. gonna watch a show together i get into bed I pull up the. I'll check Slack one more time. What Miles? Holy! What on earth? Crap! Not what I expected to find. Yeah, it was it was insane. I mean, I was uh, just blown away. I was I was shook a little bit. I remember you ten, you were tilting. I was unbelievably I, for ten, what ten, had happened. Ten minutes afterwards, I'm still sitting on my couch, kind of just. Dazed. Taking it all in, and it's weird. I wasn't like emotional about it. I, weeping. I, yes, I was. I was weeping. Um, but it was just like, man, I just couldn't believe what I saw. I couldn't believe it, and I, I wanted to know every ounce of information about it from every player and every. You know, it, it's just it's just such a crazy thing. Whenever there's an event that happens that has never nothing like that's ever happened before in sports, it's a wow. It's a wow now, moment. Uh, there were pretty, probably people out there who they still haven't seen it. If you missed the end of the game, like it was already out of hand. Miles Garrett tackles Mason Rudolph, sacks Mason Rudolph uh, a little bit. Give, gave him a little bit of extra oomph for a game that was already over. A It caused a ruckus and a melee. Then Mason Rudolph kind of tries to rip off Miles Garrett, his rip his helmet off. To which then Garrett from the bottom from the bottom from which Garrett then pulls Rudolph up by his face mask, takes his helmet off, and eventually swings Rudolph's helmet like a weapon at Rudolph, hits him on the head. Fortunately for really everybody involved, it was not the actual crown of the helmet, but this is the first time I've seen a helmet taken off and used as a weapon. That's the summation of what happened. It was insane. I did find Twitter to be Twitter. Oh, yeah. Because it was like, this you is, know, it was like a competition of how much punishment Miles Garrett deserved. Right. Five, seven games, his whole season, two seasons. Put him in jail. Put him in prison. He is going to be in trouble. No question. And Big Baker, trouble. You know, 
Baker came out and Baker was shook. Baker's interview was as transparent as he could be. He didn't equivocate. And some may say, well, you should have, you know, your teammates aren't going to like that you were just open and honest with what happened. Whatever. I mean, this is this goes beyond the scope of protective leadership at the quarterback position. This goes into the realm of exactly what Baker said, which was, uh, you know, this is inexcusable, inexcusable, and in beyond a rivalry, it endangers the other team. It we can't comprehend. We were talking before the show how you get to the point with five seconds left in a game you're winning to lose control like that. And I I liked Miles Garrett before this incident. He was more of the mild-mannered, see him on hard knocks, teaching the other players in a very mild-mannered way. He's kind of wired differently. He lost his cool. He'll pay the price. And for fantasy purposes, you know, it's not much of a, a tale. But my goodness, what a what an evening. Yeah, I mean, for fantasy purposes, we've been talking about picking up the Browns' defense. They looked good tonight. They've got a stretch run of great games. Now you're definitely going to be without Garrett. You could end up being without other players too. But to speak to the actual game, Baker Mayfield had himself a good fantasy outing. He's kind of recovering. This is three straight games in a row now for Baker that things have outperform- been outperforming expectations. The, yeah. w- the wide receiver one for the Browns is continuing to come through. Oh, very nice. Uh, Jarvis, Jarvis had another good game. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how Odell can manage to piece together a 60-yard game no matter when, when his targets come. Started the game on fire and then – yeah, the touchdowns, they were there for, for Baker. Got yep. it done. Heck of a, a touchdown catch by Carlson. And pre- before he got pummeled, Mason Rudolph was unequivocally <laughs> awful. And Jason brought this up yesterday. He found a little stat nugget that was insane. And he brought it up on the Sirius XM show, which is that other than, I think, game one. His, his first start was in San Francisco on the road. Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. And then he's played seven games now. Uh, and well, now eight, and that was the other six games were all at home. He had not really gone to the road. This was his second road game uh, in seven games having been played. He was six at home, one on the road, and this is why Vegas had the line with the Browns winning. Mason Rudolph is terrible, and if the Browns get up, there's no way he could come back, and then the Browns lose James Conner. Let's say James Conner's pretty... Like, and they lose Juju Smith-Schuster. And, Deontay and they Johnson. lose Deontay Johnson. It was well, it was the, a wicked night. The exact worry I brought up on Sirius was if the Browns get up ten nothing, I think the game's over. Right, because Mason can't will them back. And we also now maybe we examine this before we move on to uh, the rest of the show. But it hasn't paid off to jump right back in post injury sure. on anyone lately. David Johnson, Deshaun Jackson, Adam Thielen. Now James Conner, the AC joint injury, we talked about it early in the week. That's a risk. You knew it was a risk with the shoulder, and here we are. So I, I had the exact same thought that you're having when it comes to Emmanuel Sanders, right? Emmanuel Sanders leaves the game. He was injured. Now he's coming back. I think he's going to play this week, but maybe that's just not worth the risk. Even though he torched the Cardinals a, a few weeks ago, maybe you say, I've got another good option let me wait for these guys to be healthy versus trying to call my shot and get their first game back. Yeah, and then maybe that brings up Austin Hooper for the playoff run if he's out three or four games. We talked about that a little bit uh, yesterday too. Do you, do you have the trust to hold Hooper and play him right away in your fantasy playoffs? The this gets a little it gets a little <laughs> dicey. You don't want to miss the upside. It's hard for you to be in that situation, but it's what it is. So it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right, every Friday we want to say thank you to those of you that support the show at jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. We actually just added a fantasy footballers Discord server. Mm. So if you want to, we have the forums that you get access to, but if you want to interact in real time with uh, a community of over 7,000 amazing people, check it out. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm told it's lit. Uh, uh, I'm in there. <laughs> oh, then it's off the chain. Yeah, it's it is as honestly, and I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to overstate this, but it is as good as my Instagram game. Yeah, oh. your Instagram game is real anticipatory. It's, oh, just wait, man. It's Ryan. I've been working hard on this post. Congratulations, Foot Clan Friday winner Ryan Bangerter. 
That's a unique last name. You win. $55 to shopballers.com. Let's go ahead and uh, get into the news. And we're going to be modifying, tweaking the in and out segment a little bit. I wanted to let people know that. Because we record the show Friday morning, you still got Friday afternoon practices. And because we put up game day alerts on Sunday, Mike is live every Sunday morning, an hour before game time with injury updates. We're going to try to focus this, this down into the core big-time injury news, making our projections just on those guys. And then we're going to, you know, if you follow us on social media, like I said, the game day alerts at jointhefoot.com, you'll get updates uh, on some of the middling players uh, at that point. So without further ado. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in or out? Just a few big names. Marquise Hollywood Brown didn't practice Thursday. Never do practices. Do you believe he's in? Yes. Yeah, I So am you'd worried. start him right if now. Make if, the start declaration. If he's in, I start him. David Montgomery went down with an ankle, uh, a Remember? rolled ankle on Wednesday, defined as a lightly rolled, but didn't practice Thursday. Our own Matthew Betts has concerns about his availability. Uh, I do too. And if you're uh, Mike, absolutely does, and and uh, for good reason. He plays Sunday night football, and you, if you don't want to mess with injury, it's not like Montgomery's a guarantee to get you production. If you need to pivot for safety purposes, I think you just do it. Yeah, and and that's my plan. If I'm a David Montgomery owner and I can pivot, I would. Mike, yep. I assume since Raheem Moster is your start of the week, if Brita is out and Montgomery is active, who are you playing between Moster? Most, yeah, okay. Like it, it, Montgomery, it's not just availability; it's re-injury risk I mean, and he's going to be heavily taped but i'm not playing him this week i mean you've seen how good david johnson's been with a bum ankle right bad real good <laughs> emmanuel sanders in or out with the rib injury he'll play he'll play but i mean who's to say he doesn't take another roll-up hit and have to leave the game so if you can pivot pivot alshon jeffrey he did not practice on thursday and head coach doug peterson says pretty iffy for sunday's game against new england this has been the the story for Alshon Jeffrey over the last few years. It's just kind of doesn't seem to recover quick and deals with injuries for a prolonged period of time. In or out, Alshon Jeffrey? Uh, out of my lineup, I mean, he's a borderline guy if he's healthy against the New England Patriots. Oh, I'm not starting against the Patriots. It's, exactly. This this could end up being a, a blessing in disguise for fantasy owners that are forced to look elsewhere. Yeah, fair point. Jordan Howard as well on the Eagles dealing with the stinger. Has not been cleared for contact. We also know Darren Sproles is now out for the rest of the season, so Jay Ajayi visited, whether that's just the emergency list or the bottom of the depth chart. Jordan Howard seems very iffy for a New England matchup there. Yeah, I, I would – I mean, it's it's too early to know, but the, the way it's being reported about Jay Ajayi going back, it looks like there's a real shot they sign him. And when I heard, okay, Darren Sproles looks like his career is done, they're bringing in Jay Ajayi, my first thought was – what a weird comp. Like, you've got your third down scat back uh, weapon. He goes down and you bring in Jay For Sproles, by the way, it's a torn right hip flexor. Yeah, and so that leads me to believe that they might be worried they're without Jordan Howard. Well, if he's not clear for contact, he's got a football game in two days. Wait, is it a, is it a contact game? I've been told. Okay. <laughs> it's, Wait. Yeah, based on last night, <laughs> it is oh, a very contact goodness. game. All right, and then... What do you think about Matthew Stafford this week? He remains sidelined at Thursday's practice. Is not turning the right way. Do you think he's in or out? I think he's out. I think he's out as well. And that Vegas line, in my opinion, really needs to update because it seems way too high if Stafford is not playing. All right. Like I said, game day alerts. Join the foot.com. Mike's live on Sunday morning on all of our social media. Uh, you can catch it on Twitter at the FF Ballers on the YouTube channel. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's get back into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. Jason, in what to speak to what you just said, I'm looking and like Caesars has they've pulled the point spread. Ah, for the Detroit. Yeah, game. I would have expected that too if you get this late in the week. So find if, one that hasn't. <laughs> if you got in and got in on that under, congratulations. Yeah, I, I think it'll be Driscoll. 
All right, right. Yes, yesterday we talked about the Cowboys, Lions, Jags, Colts, Broncos, Vikings, Texans, Ravens, Jets, Redskins, Falcons, Panthers. Seven matchups remaining on today's show, starting with the Bills at the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins are 2-7. and seven. Bills are 6-3. and three. Bills are six-and-a-half-point road favorites. It's a 41-point over-under. And uh, here we are. Mike's start of the week, Josh Allen taking on Ryan Fitzpatrick in yet another revenge game. All of his games are revenge games. But I feel like this is the real one. Like when I think of Ryan Fitzpatrick, I I still think of him as, I as the if, Buffalo Bills I, quarterback. Does he remember that he jet. played for the Bills? Does Fitzpatrick? Yeah, does he even who, recall those days? Who do you associate him most with? Where did where where was his peak? Cincinnati. Really? What? I go Jets. What? There you go. Wow. This He's is why every, been everywhere. This is why a, a revenge game works on Could all be. levels. I won a championship streaming <laughs> streaming him. How about That's Houston? How Bill. about Houston? What? Yeah. All right. The number one most asked start sit question of the entire week. We've got the start sit tool on the website. The number one question is involves the Bills backfield, Devin Singletary. Whether you'd play Devin Singletary this week. Over Brian Hill, free agent darling pickup at Carolina. Singletary the last three weeks, 72%, 69%, 68% of snaps. Miami's allowing the fourth most rushing yards in the NFL, as well as big plays. So where do you go with that number one most asked question? So for me, I look at these. These are two good matchups. Carolina's a bad rushing defense uh, for Brian Hill and the Miami Dolphins are a bad rushing defense. While I do think Brian Hill gets a little bit more work than Devin Singletary because there's not as many people around, they're both going to get enough work to do business. I like both players. So I'm going to take the more talented one, which is Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary has been electric in his short career. Really, the only time that he is disappointed on a per-touch basis was only this last week, and I think that's just the – the recency bias where it's like, oh, no, he, he had a down week, and so I worry I can't play him. I'm I'm sticking with uh, Singletary, but I like Hill a lot this week. I believe that Brian Hill is safer than Devin Singletary. For volume? For volume. I believe that he's safer. Uh, so if you need an upside play, Singletary is more talented. I think you've got the big play opportunity, the passing game opportunity. I think Brian Hill's a little bit safer. Mike, where do you lean on that decision? I lean that I'd... I, I like your your thought process there. I would lean Singletary though. It's it's really close. I like yeah. both guys. They're they are back to back in my rankings. Yeah, yeah. Kalen Balaj on the other side, he is one hundred percent on the Miami Dolphins. He is somewhat interesting to me because the one place you can beat Buffalo is on the ground. They're twenty fourth against fantasy running backs, and Kalen Balaj he got. Let's talk about volume. What was he at? 20, yeah, 20 carries this past week against the Colts, even though he was very, very inefficient. I think he can have more success against his Buffalo Bills defense and has a chance to rip one off. You, you, can't, you can't make me do it. You can't make me. Okay. I'm my, I'm my own person. Andy's almost upset of the week. Did you, did you just pick the Dolphins? As you're almost He upset. picked them to cover. As you're almost, What's the line? I did. It's a six, six and a half point line. That's not... Dolphins. I think it'll be a close game. We've got the divisional game. Bill's coming off a loss at Cleveland. I haven't seen enough from... So you are playing Balazs then? Because uh, Parker's going to get Tredavious White. He is. He is. Yeah. I, I Playing Balazs means playing him in the context of what you got. So as a running back, as a flex play, sure, put him out there. Guaranteed volume. I think the game hits the under. That's kind of more what I'm getting at. You know, we thought we'd see a pretty ugly game last night. That's what we got. I think this game ends up being a little uglier. Dolphins playing well, two-game winning streak. Credit where credit is due, and the Bills, they don't always travel. You you kind of get surprised by the Bills, and I like them. I want them to do well. But I, I think like, it's going to be a dogfight. I like a lot of the Bills. I like John Brown a lot in this game. He was my pivot if Marquise Hollywood Brown is unable to go, he would become my start of the week. I go from Brown to Brown, and uh, I think both have a great chance at a touchdown here. Brown to Brown. Are you benching Devontae Parker entirely because of Tredavious yeah. White? Yes, if I can. Yeah, me too. 
Okay. And then uh, Mike Gesicki, you going back to that well? He's part of the barf. Part he's, of the barf. He's, he's, just, uh, he's one of the chunks. When you got to sort through uh, <laughs> vomitus. Oh, come on. And find the the piece. There's no way to talk about another like, human oh, being. Oh, there's my ring. Right, that's what I was going to. There's, <laughs> there's the ring. You Because sometimes once you uncover it, it's not the ring. And you go, oh, no. I just. I just no, it's a gasicky. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get gas. Oh, I feel gasicky. <laughs> you ever done that with the? Uh, you, you threw something away, you didn't mean to, so you decide you've made the mental decision. I'm gonna go through the trash. Mm-hmm. Like I, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through the trash and then not find it. We've all done that. And then you yep. feel just gasicky. And then it's like, oh, it's next to the trash can. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's, just, it's somewhere. <laughs> I else. It's, it's it. in my hand. The I whole already time. pulled that out. All right, hey, before we move on to the Saints Buccaneers, I want to thank uh, today's sponsor, Amazon Logistics. This episode of the show brought to you by Amazon Logistics. Right now, Amazon is looking for delivery service partners, entrepreneurs who can start their own package delivery business and build a motivated team of drivers to operate delivery routes in their community. As a delivery service partner, you get access to a full suite of resources, including training, on-demand support, and exclusive deals on equipment like Amazon-branded vehicles and industry-grade handheld devices. If you are passionate about hiring and coaching great teams, this is a great opportunity for you to see if you have what it takes to become an Amazon delivery service partner. Go to logistics.amazon.com. That's L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C-S dot Amazon.com. And we want to thank Roman for helping stop that awful hair loss. Uh, you can never stop it early enough. You know, as soon as you notice it, get, you know, yes. a, unless you're like, I'm loving this. I'm <laughs> so excited about this male pattern baldness that is going through my family Honey, line. check out my spot. <laughs> Look at here. If you want to stop it, Roman can help you get out of total crisis That mode. George Costanza. That's the look I'm going <laughs> oh, for. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe you're not dealing with hair loss. You start shaving on your own. Right. But if not, if you're like <laughs> normal people and you want to stop, you can connect with a U.S. licensed physician for free from the comfort of your own home, from phone, from the web. Roman offers FDA-approved over-the-counter and prescription options. If the d- doctor decides medication is right for you, Roman will deliver it right to your door in discreet packaging. Roman gets members started with a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Visit GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers. All right, the 7-2 and two Saints take on the 3-6 and six Buccaneers. This game's in Tampa. The Saints are 5.5-point favorites. It's got a beautiful 50-point over-under, and I think a lot of that has to do with a couple of beat-up secondaries. Mm, New yes. Orleans is going to be, um, I believe they're going to be without Marshawn Lattimore this week. He left early with the injury last week, and he's just not going to be ready to go. And Tampa Bay, they lost a couple guys in their secondary to injury. They just cut Vernon Hargraves. So the 50-point over-under, I I think it holds true in this one. This matchup doesn't always lead to what you expect. We've seen that in years past. Mm -hmm. But you've got a couple starts of the week. Uh, Jason's quarterback, Jameis Winston. Mike has – or I'm sorry, Jason's tight end as well, Jared Cook in this matchup. So big decisions to be made. You're playing Alvin Kamara. You're playing the big boys at wide receiver, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, who, by the way, major, major upgrade from the Lattimore. Oh, he, he, he was goosed yeah. this year by Marshawn Lattimore. By the way, Mike Evans, 16 game pace, 96 for 16, 43 and 12. Uh, if you were worried at the beginning, that any of those a zero, any of those week two tweets about dropping him literally that I read, Talent rises. Yep. It, it, it's there. Mike Evans is great. Chris Godwin, by the way, on pace for 107 receptions, 1,492 yards, and 10.6 touchdowns. So both guys are in your lineup. Where's the value in this game? Are you looking at an O.J. Howard with that over-under as interesting? Are you looking at a Traquan Smith, who played 82% of snaps last week, as interesting? Um, no, I'm, I'm not really looking at those secondary pieces. We, we talked about this with OJ Howard. He had the great game. It was my start of the week last week. I have cut him. He is available on waivers. I don't know, it, it, Andy, if you'd like to pick him up and play him against me, please do. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's not to say he can't get another touchdown, but this is not the Arizona Cardinals defense. 
And I think with the absence of Lattimore, they're going to be able to do what they want to do, which is go with uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I'm, I'm basically sticking with the stars here. I'm not going Latavius Murray. I'm not going you – know, because Tampa is a really, really good rush defense. And, you know, at least – Number Kamara, two in football, and they shut down Drake and uh, David Johnson. And with the return of Alvin Kamara this past week against Atlanta, which is – I mean, should have been a nice match for the Saints, but only seven opportunities for Latavius. And, and you brought it up, Andy. These matchups where it's like, okay, you've got a high-scoring Saints team. They're coming off of that loss where they're, they're really going to want to just torch the Buccaneers, and the Buccaneers can – can put up points and they've got a bad secondary so often this matchup disappoints because it's an interdivision they know each other well and they can play well I'm thrilled that Lattimore is out for fantasy purposes even if he's in I mean there's the chance with a hamstring that he you know he re-injures himself so that's why I think I'm sticking with the main guys I think the biggest question I think Drew Brees has a huge week yes a huge week I would love to play Drew Brees over my Phillip Rivers please Someone drop Drew Brees in our league, please. <laughs> um, hey, the, the whole Philip Rivers thing for you is so entertaining. To it's me. the because worst. I you don't want to play him. I but really you don't have to play him. But I mean, unless you I want really to go, don't want to play him. I get to go him or Carson Wentz with maybe no <laughs> Alshon against the Patriots. I can't do it. The I biggest, love this. The biggest question in this game is Ronald Jones because the Saints are a great rush D. They're number three. They're only giving up 14.6 fantasy points per week, but Ronald Jones has really kind of broken out. He's been given the role. He's looked good. They're wanting to get him involved in passing, and I think people who have him have started him, have relied on him. What do you do if he's I, on your roster? Yeah, I mean, I'm playing him over a guy like Kalen Blage, and I'm looking at the situation like Ronald Jones is not going to win me my week, but he's going to get me volume and opportunity, so I'm... He's in my lineup. He looks yeah. like he's our consensus RB21, so you're looking at low end two, high end three type of numbers. Ronald I'm, Jones. I'm playing him with confidence. Or Sony Michelle, who's been against very disappointing Philly? against Philly. I'll, I probably like Ronald. Ronald. I would as well. Because I believe Arians. I believe that he's going to continue to give him targets. What he does with them, he'll never know. All right, last one. Ronald Jones or David Montgomery. Uh, Ronald. Ronald Jones. Yeah. yeah. Cardinals at 3-6-1 and one, take on the 8-1 49ers. This one's in San Francisco. The Cardinals took them to the brink two weeks ago. You do have the injury concerns on the 49ers' side. Uh, George Kittle had a monster game against Arizona. We don't expect him to be back out there. Emmanuel Sanders may not be out there. It's interesting. The 49ers are very heavy favorites, 10.5 points. It's a 44.5 point over under. I like the Cardinals to cover that, but... Jimmy Garoppolo had his greatest game as a professional against Arizona in Week 9, so are you expecting more of the same at home in this one? I definitely think you can start Jimmy Garoppolo. Arizona, even after it's gotten Patrick Peterson back, has been bad. So they were bad before it, and they're bad afterwards as far as stopping you know, the, the passing positions that matter. They're literally the worst against quarterback in the league. And so I, I would say um, if you're out there, in our league, and you've got Jimmy Garoppolo, please drop Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> I so, can see a theme. You're really looking. I just don't want to play Philip Rivers. <laughs> Do you want to play Rivers or Kyler? Kyler Murray? Oh, yeah. That's a that's a great question. I, I think I would... <sighs> Is Kyler? Yes, he came out with the good game. If you do look at the old box score, like, oh, two, 240 and two. I think I would go Rivers. But there, there was the 80-yard touchdown to Andy Isabella. Yeah, the Forty ers defense is so good. It's going to be a, uh, you know, intimidating atmosphere for Kyler Murray. I've pivoted like in I th in our listener league. I'm going Kyle Allen over Kyler Murray this week. Kyler Murray and Carson Wentz are two of the most <laughs> difficult starts of the week. If you're looking at them and you're like, I guess I'm gonna, I have to play them, but I'm looking to pivot. Yeah, in, that, I play Derek Carr over Kyler. Oh, I would love. To play Derek. In if five, you have Derek Carr, please cut him. In five quarters, because remember the the overtime game with the Seahawks and the 49ers went the maximum time. So in five quarters, essentially, Russell Wilson put up 232 passing yards and one passing touchdown. Yeah, the the what the 49ers proved even in their loss is that their defense is unbelievable. Yes. It is fully legit. That defensive line 
with Bosa is going to get after Kyler Murray. And so, yeah, I, I you know, I would prefer to not play Kyler Murray. Uh, that that extends a little bit to definitely to Larry Fitzgerald. I know he had a good bounce back game last week, but that was, I mean, you're talking about the, a world of difference going from the Tampa Bay secondary to the 49ers secondary. I cut Larry Fitzgerald for mm. Russell Gage. Yeah, I don't. So that's where I'm at with Larry and the schedule and where you're at. And then Christian Kirk had the monster game. He's a big decision. Would you rather start Christian Kirk or Debo Samuel? Let's say Emmanuel Sanders is going to be active because we expect. I think he will be active, but he's dealing with the rib injury. I, uh, I have Kirk ranked higher, but honestly, I think I'd rather start Debo. Debo or Tyler Boyd. Debo. Debo or Mike Williams against Kansas City. Mm, Oof. Mike Williams. I'll go Williams. Debo or Devontae Parker? Debo. Okay, Debo yeah. or Marvin Jones against Dallas? If uh, he doesn't have Stafford, I would go Debo. Marvin! I think there is a real opportunity for a reprise for Debo Samuel this week. Agreed. The uh, At the running back position, you can't have very much confidence on the Cardinals side, but Kenyon Drake would be the one to start if you had to. I mean, Kalen Bellage killed or, him the last time. Kalen Bellage or Kenyon Drake, where do you go there? Uh, Drake? Yeah, I would... I would trust the offense of Arizona over the offense of the Dolphins. And then on the other side, Tevin Coleman, Raheem Mostert, Mike start of the week. I almost want to call it Mike's sneaky start of the week with Raheem Mostert. But the number four most asked start sit question on the site is Tevin Coleman versus Brian Hill. Lots of Brian Hill decisions to be made because you go out, you compete, you waiver wire him, you fab him. But then you have to look at your lineup and say, am I going to put Brian Hill against Carolina in or am I going to play Tevin Coleman Against Arizona, where do you lean on that one? Yeah, Tevin Coleman was terrible against Arizona two weeks ago. He was the running back 41, and I think that's sticking with people, and it shouldn't. Arizona is not great against running backs or players, and so I, Te- Tevin Coleman is a very good start this week. I'm I'm not scared. I mean, he was, you know, I, I know he hasn't been what you hoped after that Carolina game when he was just unbelievable, but he's still been solid, and... With Breida out, I think Coleman is going to be relied on even more. I think Hill's floor is safer, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patriots, 8-1, and one, take on the 5-4 and four Eagles. Patriots are three-and-a-half-point favorites in Philly. It's a 45-point over-under. You know, if you named three or four of the most confusing teams in football, Philadelphia would been, be in that category for me. Some weeks they look together. Uh, some weeks they look like they are a playoff team and other weeks they kind of look like they can't figure out the offensive side of the ball they don't have the weapons they don't have uh the game plan execution they're like the football equivalent of a magic eye puzzle the magic eye picture you know where you have to explain. cross the old, oh, like the old 90s where it's just it's garbly goop but then you cross your eyes just right you're like oh it's a schooner i have never seen one Oh, I have never. I tried. I'm sorry. I got a book. I looked uh, at every. You page did the whole for, like get up close, pull it back. There was a day I had to spend two or three hours. I'm like, I will, I will see. And then I'm like, they're all lying. They're all lying. There is nothing here. They're all pretending to see something, and I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest. All the cool kids are walking around the campus like that's a boat, that's a tree, right? And you're like, and I'm I just like, want to be one. That's garbledy gook. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's a uh, that's the Mona Lisa. So you're saying occasionally you have to cross your eyes in order to see. Right. It's there. <laughs> but then you get people like Jason. They just, they've never seen it. It's not there. The all, <laughs> It's not going to be very easy to start Eagles players in this game. Correct. Wentz, Howard, Sanders could be somewhat sneaky. I try to avoid anybody that is in the vicinity of the cornerbacks in New England. So... I think Dallas Goddard is somewhat interesting in this matchup. It's not like Philadelphia is not going to do anything whatsoever on offense. Um, and he has the same number of red zone receptions as Zach Ertz this year. He's got He played a season-high 79% of snaps in Week 9. I think one of you guys brought him up early in the week. I do think with Alshon, the injury, Goddard's going to have to be utilized yes. as and a pass-catching option. I'd rather go up against the linebackers than I would the corners. Yeah, and if, if Alshon is gone, I mean, we've talked about this uh, for years, New England always takes away your number one option. That becomes Zach Ertz, and they will they will, they will I, scheme I to where... Yeah, I won't be surprised if Gilmore shatters, or shadows. Shatters? <laughs> <laughs> both. They're both true. He's going to shatter Zach but, Ertz. But Gilmore will probably shadow Ertz if Alshon is out. And that I'm still playing Ertz, so don't hear I'm benching Ertz. You're just he's that, gonna, that would 
be unfortunate. I'm so sad. Both teams coming off the bye. We've talked about Sonny Michel. He's had a very magic eye type of year. Four weeks inside the top 20. Two weeks as the RB3. Three weeks outside the top 40. If he scores, he's good. That's fair. But you made a decision earlier that you were going to go with pass catching opportunities for Ronald Jones over Sonny Michel. Yes. James White leads all running backs in red zone targets and receptions. James White, uh, our RB23 by consensus this week. Mohamed Sanu, is he a must start? Yes, he yeah. is. Uh, against the Eagles secondary 25th against fantasy wide receivers. They traded the second round pick for him. And much like uh, Antonio Brown, when they picked him up, they said, okay, you're, you're a big part of what we're doing right now for that one game. It We've seen the same thing with Mohamed Sanu. The, the second game with the team, 10 receptions on 14 targets. I mean, he was He's the guy behind Edelman. When, when is when is Nikhil Harry – is he – Yeah, the, he's he ready, right? He, he could have played this, this past week. Yeah, I wonder if he gets in this game. This would be a nice matchup to – I mean, I'm not playing him. I'm just wondering – To watch him? More for, you know, does, does that end up siphoning anything away from Mohamed Sanu? What about Philip Dorsett? He's been okay this if year. If you're desperate – and the Philly defense has been beaten, you know, in the secondary. Yeah, I'm not touching anybody outside of the top two, myself. Edelman and Sanu. Yeah, and then I, I don't know whether Harry's going to be out there, Myers or, you know, Dorsett. So. I mean, you look at what Dorsett has done. He had a couple – I mean, week one was huge. So that's still, I think, skewing your thought process with Dorsett, but it's two receptions, three, three, the injury game, two. He just gets a lot of touchdowns. Around the end zone, he's, he's been utilized. Yeah, I, I, I it'll take the big play. Yeah, it will. Bengals zero and nine, Raiders five and four. The game's in Oakland. Raiders are ten and a half point favorites. It's a forty eight and a half point over under. Derek Carr is my start of the week at the quarterback position, and the three and of us have him at QB eight on the week uh, in our consensus rankings on the site. I feel like we could be like Derek Carr is my start of the week at the quarterback position. Josh Jacobs start of the week at the running back position Darren Waller I mean I, I Tyrell love, Williams absolutely I mean I absolutely love the Raiders in this matchup I think they're going to be able to do whatever they want hopefully it is through the air early because I assume the end of the game is going to be Josh Jacobs killing the clock against the hapless Ryan Finley led Bengals Josh J uh, I'm sorry uh Darren Waller Mike is this a important game in your mind yes. for Darren Waller. Yeah, it and this is really the get right matchup. I mean the past couple weeks Waller 3 for 42 for 52, 2 for 11 he did score in that game so it ended up being okay for fantasy but the volume of the past couple weeks has uh, evaporated unfortunately but this against this Bengals team we've seen Mark Andrews just crush them twice already this season. I think Darren Waller gets gets back in the good graces. Joe Mixon, Jason started the week at the running back position. We know the volume is going to be there regardless of the score. Tyler Boyd uh, left injured last week. He kind of is guaranteed the five, you know, the 5 for 48, 6 for 60 type of line, but you're in a <laughs> you might Mike looked up on our wall here. And saw the matchup preview, and on one side is Joe. We Mixon. always have the players up, you know. To, like, I look love at this. It. Look at this, and it's Joe Mixon. And so Waller. now we got to hit the drop, it's and now Waller. it's a full-on wall <laughs> Look at you, a bang up job there, Al Borland. <laughs> what is that? Is awesome. Well, it gives you a little bit of optimism in the game, right? Yeah, I mean, look. I talk about the Raiders. Those are some slow routes, though, when the actual walrus is out there. That mustache. He curls all of his uh, out routes, too. There's no way that guy can – you can't turn on a dime as a walrus. Now, do do the uh, the, the lady walrus, they're, they're into the, the mustache? <laughs> the lady walrus? <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, like, they can't really – they're walruses, Mike, so they can't really trim it up. <laughs> I understand that, but it's like a lion's mane. You know, the, the animals in the wild, their appearance – Helps them later on with reproduction. <laughs> okay. And like, is the mustache it? I've is really never, I've never thought about it. I really have. You have now, and in, so is the rest of America. In the water, a walrus can move as fast as twenty one point seven four miles per hour. That's a walrus. That's yeah. uh, like Derrick Henry up the sideline. Yeah, yeah. That's about where you're at. Let's race him. 
Get a get a get a hundred yard. What tank about on of land? Water. What about on land? Not not so fast. Okay. How did this deteriorate? Sorry. So getting back to fantasy, I talk about I love all of. <laughs> no, the, we're living in a fantasy. <laughs> I love all of the Raiders because of how bad the Bengals' defense has been. The truth is, the Raiders' defense for fantasy purposes has been worse than the Bengals. So that gives you a little bit of hope. That's why you know Mixon my start of the week. The problem is I just don't know if you can rely. It's like bad defense versus terrible quarterback. Yeah, I, that's why I kind of I'm looking Eifert's way, and if I'm digging through the trash bag, pulling out a ring, Eifert should have an opportunity for some targets in this game. They're thirtieth against the fan, you know, tight ends in fantasy. There's a possibility that Eifert does what he did last week, gets into the end zone. Uh, is is a safety valve for Ryan Finley in this game? Yeah, it's the, the it's a tough decision here for the Raiders DST uh, to play they're a, them or not because they're not a great defense. I mean, you look across the board. Yeah, they but last week they were very good. Yes, they were, and they're still at home. I think they're riding high. I think this is a uh, I would absolutely play. I mean, there's right. there's defenses I would play over them, but I would play the Raiders defense here. The nice thing about that decision is that even if the Raiders give up some points. Ryan Finley's probably going to give them back. Sure. So that's the nice thing about when you, you know, whether it's Driscoll, Finley, Hoyer, you've always got the pick six possibility. Speaking of Driscoll, the the breaking news from Sleeper was Matt Patricia does not expect Stafford to play. Yeah. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. I think he has Washington next week, and he was a highly targeted guy for the Patrick Mahomes bye in week 12. People might have to pivot because, you know, Stafford was on a roll, but dealing with the back injury. Sunday night football, the Bears, the Rams. The Rams are six and a half point favorites. Bears are four and five. Rams are five and four. It's the been a Rams are six and a half point favorites? But it's a very low over under. It's a forty point over under because you got the Bears defense and then you got the Bears offense. And they only uh, the implied point total is only sixteen point seven points for the Bears. And Mitch Trubisky's like, Yeah, let's get there. I've seen this game before. You've seen it. We saw it last year. Yeah, Jared Jared Goff had a real game against the Bears. He did. Uh, it was real bad. Now that game was in Chicago. Thankfully, sure. this is at home. But Trubisky you, v Goff. I cannot wait for this in prime time. <laughs> this, in prime time. This is terrible. I mean, can they not flex games out this week? The NFL. I uh, thought they did because this can't be the man. No, they fl they flex for next week. Yeah, the oh, Packers. Oh, the Packers have been flexed next week, but this they're like. Yeah, this this is the one we're going to stick with. They're going to be playing episodes of another show in the corner, like their own built-in. To, just to, to keep just, people watching. Like to keep them engaged. How do you not have Lamar so, versus Watson? So the Rams, uh, who I, th I think we can agree that the primary struggle has been caused by the offensive line. They went from having a great offensive line to a bad offensive line. According to Pro Football Focus, they have by a mile the widest gap difference in rating between their offensive line one year to the next. That was prior to losing two more offensive linemen. They now have the traded for backup Browns offensive line bust who's a center coming in and playing guard this week. I mean, it is a hodgepodge on the offensive line with Khalil Mack there. That, I guess that's why I was surprised to see the Rams favored by almost a touchdown. But this is a – I mean – Well, they're home, and it's a ghastly fantasy proposition for a lot of players in this league. Adjusted – perspective for Todd Gurley he's basically a touchdown dependent type of player yeah and uh huge disappointment for fantasy owners hoping he would get the ball more be a part of a very fluid offense that hasn't manifested my problem with with Goff is he's been thrown into the fire it, this reminds me of the year that the Raiders offensive line deteriorated from a top three to something that all of a sudden Carr had to try to execute outside the pocket improvise Goff hasn't shown he's capable of that. If you call a slip screen to the right side, it, Goff doesn't care oh, what you, the defensive line is doing. You better believe he's throwing it. He's going to throw the ball. And that's that should be discouraging for those of you that are Goff. As a good truthers. soldier should. Follow and, orders. Yeah, and, and mind you, if hopefully the Bears and Rams were both watching Mason Rudolph last night, and then they feel great about their quarterback situation. That's all I'm saying. David Montgomery, you talked about the – issue Tariq Cohen is there an opportunity there for 
he got some work last week, scored. Are you looking He's, at him? He scored, but his actual like usage was four receptions, three carries. The week before it was two receptions, two carries, three receptions, four carries. Like Sure, he but, scored. Yeah, that, but but Montgomery's gonna, hurt. But, yeah, I was going to say, if, but at the same time, the last three weeks for Montgomery were 27, 14, and 17 carries. If Montgomery is hurt or limited and they need to get him a little bit more involved, I would be surprised if he doesn't end up with you know eight or nine carries to go along with the targets. He might, but I honestly think if, if Montgomery uh, like can't go in this game or he goes down in the middle of it, I think you'll see Ryan Nall take – Work. Like, I don't. I don't think they'll thrust it all upon Tariq Cohen, Cordero Maybe. Patterson, or pa yeah, or even Cordero Patterson. I just. I don't see the the work for Cohen going up to a point where you're super excited so you, to play. You play him. Balage over Cohen. Yes. Okay. I'm personally pretty worried about Allen Robinson getting the Jalen Ramsey coverage. Your upside is capped, and you know the downside. The downside is yeah, uh, Mitch Trubisky hurling a few errant targets his way, and then like two weeks ago you're in trouble. So I'm, I'm concerned. It doesn't mean I wouldn't play him at all. It just means don't expect him to win you the week. Make plans with the rest of your roster to get upside elsewhere. He's the only brown or brown. He's, he's the only bear that I think is, has a realistic shot of starting on my fantasy rosters this week. I'm pivoting from Montgomery where I can. I would never touch Mitchell Trubisky, uh, <laughs> Tariq Cohen, Trey Burton. There, there are no other options. The real question marks here are on the other side of the ball, specifically the biggest name is, as far as what do you do is Robert Woods. Robert Woods has been disappointing on the season, had a great game last week. Ooh, uh, ooh. Well, seven for That's, ninety-five. I know, but you've you've redefined great game for Robert Woods right there, based on last year to this year. I mean, it, it's it that sucks. I mean, to not get Robert Woods high end production this year at all. I'm sure. I think seven for ninety-five is a is a very. I mean, if you did that every week, you'd he's you'd, still yet to score a touchdown on the year. That's the difference. Is that was like a bad game for him last year? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, sir. I'm playing Robert Woods. Yeah, I am too. And Josh Reynolds was playing on 100% of snaps. Is he somebody that you'd look at this week? Gerald Everett, Josh Reynolds? I would prefer not to play Reynolds this particular week with this matchup. Like, I I don't think Goff is going to have a good game. So, like, even Cooper Cup, you're playing him, but it, it wouldn't shock me to see another low, disappointing game from Cup. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm starting Cup. I'm personally starting Woods. And I think you uh, start Todd Gurley. Those three are are in your lineup, and sure. you just hold your breath. You you know you you hope that uh, Goff can do enough. I'm. It's ironic because I would not start Goff here at all. I like Everett. He's yeah. He's definitely in play. Chicago's allowed the third most fantasy points to the tight end over the last month. And when I watched the game last week, seemed like the most comfortable target for Goff last week was Everett. Everett is. Honestly, I mean, he he's now in that realm of you just he's an every week tight end. He's not an upper tier one, but, but you're not digging through but, the trash for him, right? Yeah, yeah. If if you look four since since uh, week four, and they had their buy in there, so you're talking about six, four of six matchups. He's been a top ten tight end. Gerald, uh, uh, compare that to Waller. Waller sure. in the last six matchups has been a top ten tight end once a top 12 tight end once would Gerald you, Everett is questionable with the wrist but Sean McVay expects him to play would you play Robert Woods or Christian Kirk Woods, Woods. okay fair enough I was going to ask a Sammy Watkins question but I had the we're answer. about to get to I heard the had the answer Chiefs six and four Chargers four and six Chiefs lost last week and that stunner in this game they're four and a half point favorites it's a 52.5 over under Jason oh Philip Rivers here we go <laughs> implied point total of 24 you can't complain about that oh I can't I I, I mean they're you, not till but, Monday <laughs> but you want to know what else I couldn't complain about his matchup last week and and Philip Rivers should have been great and he looked like he was washed he looked like he was du in and so I do worry about whether or not he's going to get it together. That was, you know, the first week with the new offensive coordinator. Mm. Or second week. Second. Yeah. Yeah, the game is uh, in Los Angeles. Mahomes had a great return to the lineup last week. He's got his weapons available to him. 
We call Nicole Hardman a lot of things. You can call him the, the wild card. The one touch man, the wild card. If you get him the ball, anything can happen. All it takes is one touch, but this is an interesting game to me. Damian Williams. Start sit decisions on him. He's one of the guys that people want to know. Brian Hill or Damian Williams? Damian Williams. Yeah, I, I think Damian Williams is a, a great start. I, he, he was almost my start of the week this week. Um, he's our running back 13. The Chargers are very porous against the run, and Damian Williams appears to have the job. What about the other side? Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler in this matchup. Are you starting both players? Yeah, yes. Melvin Gordon, you can play with full confidence finally. Which which is nice if you were holding on to Melvin Gordon the entire season. Eckler, it's a little bit riskier. The the snap percentage is is much lower with the new OC thirty five and forty five percent. He's still getting enough work. I mean, saved his week last week with that with that touchdown, but with the over under with the ability of the Chiefs to kind of get up by multiple scores against the Chargers. Uh, Eckler is in play for me for half and full point. Yeah, you're, you're talking about a game that Vegas expects to be very high scoring for obvious reasons, and the Chiefs are dead last in fantasy points given up to the running back position. So I think you could start both of these guys. I agree that it's it, you don't have the same confidence in Eckler, but this is a game script where if they actually utilize his screen game they might need to, and he he could end up having a, a very good game. So I'm fine starting Eckler. All right, say it at the same time. Rest of season, Austin Eckler is an RB2. Two. Two. Okay, RB2. You're in agreement. Keenan Allen, he's the wide receiver 30 over the last month. Is this the week we get the breakout? At home last year against Kansas City, he was 8 for 108 and 1. Is Keenan Allen going to finally deliver? I believe the answer is yes. I'm in that camp. I am as well. He is receiving a consistent target share. He simply hasn't scored and uh, a little bit inefficient compared to his, his previous years with Phillip. And, you know, it, look, if, if you look at the, the stretch of games, he had uh, that just terrible run where he was very disappointing. Denver, whose defense has been great. Pittsburgh, whose defense has been great. Tennessee, whose defense is pretty good. Chicago, whose defense is great. Green Bay, their secondary has shut a lot of people down. Right. I mean, last week against Oakland, he was the wide receiver 20. It wasn't the breakout game you wanted, but this is a matchup where, yeah, the, uh, this uh, he's going to be just fine. It's uh, going to be a good fantasy option this week. Mike Williams in this game or Sammy Watkins? My uh, answer is Mike Williams. Mike Williams. I would agree. Sammy Watkins continues to dominate targets and do nothing with them. 49. 44, 57, 139, 51, 30, 40. That's his fantasy finishes since week one. That is a player that should never touch your lineup. Yeah. He but he's still like a wide receiver two on the season because that week <laughs> one, oh, that victory lap was fast. He's finally dripped himself down to wide receiver 32 on the season. Oh. So the truth is beginning to emerge. All right. And then Travis Kelsey, Hunter Henry, those are smash plays this week. Yep. Now, wait, Hunter wait, wait, Henry's wait. been very consistent since returning. Wait, Sammy Watkins or McCall Hardman? One of Sammy. that's insane because you have to go Sammy. He's on no, the field. Don't. He's getting targets. But if you look at the last, no, I'm, I'm going McCall Hardman. I mean, just look at the fantasy finishes of the last since week two one. months. Since week one, he's had McCall Hardman's been in the top twenty four four times. He's been in the top thirty uh, two other times. Exactly. He's been. It, it's so weird because. I, I have such a hard time recommending people to start a guy who's barely playing. But if you do every single week, you are, you have been winning the majority of those of that game. It's crazy. It is a bit of a antithetical circumstance for fantasy owners. It's, it goes against the grain of what we know and love about targets and volume and snap percentage. But there's not there's like two people in the NFL that are as fast. And I feel so, like when Hardman comes into the game to kind of debunk the snap percentage situation. When he comes in, he comes in with a plan. When Watkins gets the ball, it's like, oh, we had to throw it to Watkins. Right. That's how I feel. It's not drawn up for him. My guys weren't open. I'll target them. Uh, it's just hard to argue against the fantasy finishes. It's so contrary to the target numbers. I've got the numbers in here. Watkins, since returning, eight targets, ten targets, nine targets. What, what? Pat Mahomes targets. Right. The lizard... The Lizard King. He's going to get been usurped. 
Yeah, as you see, he's, he's going to be off the throne. He's got to be. Let's hand it to Lazard at this point. <laughs> Sammy Watkins or Alan Lazard this week? <laughs> Duh. That is that is a cold-blooded question. Yes, especially <laughs> since one of them is on bye. Uh, yeah, was- <laughs> <laughs> solid point. I was jumping too quick into that. Uh, I, so I, I'd go Watkins in that situation. <laughs> Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. All right, don't miss your chance to join the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series this week. You just go to FanDuel.com slash ballers. It's very easy. FanDuel.com slash ballers. Every week is a new competition with limited entries, so it's not like if you haven't got in yet that you're behind the eight ball. Just win this week. That's right. I'm going to go with Dallas Goddard at 5,000 buckaroos. Interesting. No DJX, limited Alshon. I want pass catchers that are running routes against linebackers. I want the $5,000 price. Dallas Goddard is actually a player that I'm, I've pivoted to. I've got a, a friend who wants to know, would you play Dallas Goddard or O.J. Howard? Mm. Is that friend me? Is it you? Are you seriously having that question? That is my exact decision in our league of record. That's my decision in the listener league. Wow. And I'm going, I mean, I'm going, I went Goddard. My friend. I went Goddard. Wow. So. Let's, let's we'll thumb and Louise this thing. Let's, yeah, baby. I'm going to slip him in. Let's go. <laughs> let's go, Dallas. All right, Jason, who do you have as your ballers on a budget pick for this week? Uh, I couldn't decide because I love two too much. And so I'm going to give both Calvin Ridley at 5,500. He hasn't had the full breakout, but with no Mohamed Sanu, with no Austin Hooper, I think at 5,500, Calvin Ridley has the ability to be a top five wide receiver. Um, and then John Brown at 5,900 against the Dolphins. If you're talking about you p- plug those two guys into your lineup together, you have so much money to spend up. You know, it's crazy. They, they keep trying to price Christian McCaffrey out. Like, you, you just can't pay for him. And every week is like, no, I. I should have paid for it. I do feel like Calvin Ridley has ended up in the ballers on a budget section for he like is. three or four straight weeks. I don't disagree He's with your assessment. He's been successful for a couple of them, but for the for the price. I All mean, right. at that price, you don't need the the monstrous output. And mine is it's Raheem the sneaky start most at forty six hundred bucks. Uh, he is one of those guys where the, the price can't update with the the new information on Matt Burita. Playing Raheem Moster, he's kind of the free square this week to unlock so you can get someone like Christian McCaffrey to get those types of players into your lineup. All right, that'll do it for today's show. We want to thank the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a DJ Moore signed jersey, my start of the week. Oh, nice job, Brooks. It went for $55.28 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up, free to sign up. You'll get $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase whenever that is. I mean, if you're, if you're shopping anywhere online and there's a – just put ballers in. Yeah. That's, that's actually a really good just point. See and what if happens. it doesn't work, then just try footballers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. All right, that'll do it. Make sure you tune in to uh, Game Day Live. Mike will be with you an hour before kickoff on Sunday. Up to date with uh, all the injury news and all of his tilt picks. Enjoy the weekend, Bookland. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.